What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show here. So we got Russia and Saudi Arabia again trying to hurt Americans' pockets here. Take a look. Yeah, Saudi Arabia and Russia again announced deepening oil cuts, sending prices higher worldwide of oil. You can see another headline here. Oil price forecasts. Traders bracing for OPEC conference and U.S. production decline. Investors uh, await the OPEC conference for oil cues as U.S. rig decline hints as production slowdown. Saudi Arabia and Russia, the world's biggest oil exporters, deepened and announced here deepened oil cuts on Monday, sending prices higher. Despite concerns over a global economic slowdown and possible further interest rate hikes from the U.S. Federal Reserve and everybody's best friend, Jerome Powell. (laughs) Saudi Arabia said it would extend its voluntary oil output cut from 1 million barrels per day to another month to include August, adding that the cut would be extended beyond that month shortly after the saudi announcement russian deputy prime minister alexander novak said that moscow would also cut its oil exports by 500,000 barrels per day this cut amounts to 1.5 percent of the global supply and brings the total pledge by opec plus to 5.16 million barrels per day OPEC Plus has already has in place cuts of 3.66 million barrels per day. Wow, that's over 3.5 million barrels per day that they have already cut, including 2 million barrels per day agreed to last year and 1.66 million barrels per day agreed to this year. Oil prices rose on the news of the cuts with Brent up uh, 89 cents to 76.30 cents barrels by uh, today. Now, even though we don't buy any Russian oil and uh, the gas companies, the major oil conglomerates in the U.S. are constantly trading, you know, they're importing and exporting oil. That's their um, that's their choice. They can do whatever they want to do with the U.S. oil. Congress has allowed that here unless Congress makes a move and says you can no longer export U.S. oil and then you can no longer maybe import oil as well. I'm not even sure if that would lower the cost of gas here in the U.S. It actually might increase the cost of gas here in the U.S. uh, if we got rid of the free market here. Um, that actually could increase the cost of the of our gas here and natural gas and diesel and all the different uh, type of gases that we use here. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm not sure if that would actually be a good thing. Okay, um, but the problem here is that because they're the OPEC plus, think Russia, Saudi Arabia, different countries there in the Middle East have lowered output by almost, what, almost 4 million barrels per day. This has made oil uh, prices rise higher than what they normally would be worldwide. And remember, the price of oil, um, even the price of oil here in the U.S., uh, is traded on a global market. So that makes oil and gas prices, diesel prices, natural gas prices, It makes all of those prices higher wherever they're sold, even here in the U.S. There is a little bit of good news, and that is gas prices are actually, believe it or not, uh, lower than what they were a year ago, especially natural gas prices are significantly lower here. Um, if you if you use natural gas to maybe heat your home or pool or something like that, those are significantly lower than uh, they have been here recently. In fact, take a listen to this. Joining us now with more on the holiday demand at the pump, Patrick DeHaan, gas buddy head of petroleum analysis. Uh, Patrick, great to have you with us. And this stat really stood out to me that the average motorist is paying, what, $20 less uh, per fill up compared to last year. I mean, that seems to really crystallize that $20 extra in your pocket is a lot of money. 
Yeah, exactly right. And that's just for the average vehicle, especially some of those bigger campers and pickup trucks that you're going to be seeing on the roads this July 4 are going to be saving even more, upwards of $40 to $60 a tank. And so far, we are seeing Americans hit uh, the road in pretty uh, significant frequency. According to our data, last Friday was the highest Friday for U.S. gasoline consumption going back to the summer of 2022. So indeed, Americans are hitting the road. So far, gas buddy data models last week's gasoline consumption at about 9.46 million barrels a day. That would be good for one of the highest weekends of the last year, certainly the highest of 2023. And to boot, gas prices that just barely hit their lowest level now since late April, just in time for the long weekend. What, what do gas prices look like going forward, Patrick, according to your analysis? Well, I think the second half of the summer is going to be more affordable than the first half, but that's typical for the summer driving season as summer gasoline supplies build up. That typically puts downward pressure on prices. So by Labor Day, we could see prices that may be 10 or 20 cents a gallon lower. Now, keep in mind, Saudi Arabia did just extend its production cut into the month of August. That could cause oil prices to rally and partially offset our forecast for falling prices this August. And, of course, things like hurricane season or any unexpected refinery outages could make a difference for what motors are paying going into Labor Day. But beside those things, I do expect some downward pressure on prices going into the closing innings of summer. The good news doesn't end there. This fall, uh, barring a major turnaround, we could see the national average eventually falling below the $3 a gallon mark. I'm curious, Patrick, because we've been hearing so much about airlines flying at capacity. You know, every seat is booked on the plane. And and I'm wondering if to you that means that there could be fewer motorists going forward or if that doesn't make a difference. We're just pulling in a whole other kind of traveler because traveling by car is much, much more affordable. Well, I think this summer we are seeing a little bit of a shift in evolution. Last summer may have been the summer of the road trip without a mask mandate was removed last year. And it took the international community about six to 12 months really to get things going again. And that's why many Americans are now flying this summer is because the international community has opened up without a whole lot of restrictions. And so a lot of motorists still preparing to hit the road this summer, but more Americans may be uh, putting the car in the garage and doing some of that international travel that really hasn't been possible since 2019. So all in all, look for jet fuel demand to certainly be a bright spot this summer. But overall, with the economic headwinds and challenges, I wouldn't expect this summer's gasoline consumption to be anywhere near 2019's record when we briefly touched 10 million barrels a day of consumption. Yeah, so therein lies the problem is that even when gas prices start coming down, which we have seen here, um, we have countries like uh, Russia and Saudi Arabia and OPEC Plus that will be constantly fighting against us and the rest of the world to hurt your pockets and constantly make millions and millions of people, billions of people, pay more to make the, the sheiks and the billionaires more money and make the poor stay poor forever. It's a sad, sad thing. You can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below. Click the bell icon after you subscribe. I'll keep you up to date here. It's completely free to do so. Also, thanks for liking and share these videos. Click here to see the video about the Fed's plan to end money or the White House just sent out this urgent warning. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.